Welcome to Middays with Sarah J. A lot has been going on in the past couple of years. We've had some moments of enlightenment and maybe thinking about upheaving our entire lifestyle based off of pandemic. Try not to use that word, but that's what it is. So I have brought in a professional to help. Emily, thank you for being here. I am delighted. Thank you, Sarah. Emily, would you give your title for everybody out there? I am a trauma-aware transformational life coach. Coach. Pretty heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a book that just came out that you're working with. Yes. And what's the book called? The book is called Well Being at Work. It was published by Gallup. It just came out in 2021. So fresh and relevant. Perfect. And all these details are going to be found over on our website. Regardless if you are currently working, you're searching for a job, we all have to make money. Mm-hmm. We all need to feel secure in where we are, feel that we're taking care not taking care of. Yeah, that our basic yeah. needs are met. Okay. And maybe that we even have some extra. So we want more than just that, you know, hierarchy of needs. We need more than just our basic needs. Uh But security, safety, survival, those are all related to how do you earn money? And then there is a trend that has Mm -hmm. been happening since this pandemic has been dragging on. Yes. It's called the... The Great Resignation. I've heard that tossed around a lot. Buzzword. Yeah, right? Let's dig a little deeper today about that. Yes. Well, the Great Resignation... Resignation actually is a term that the media just really latched onto because they love a good moniker that starts with the word great. It is interesting. It would lead you to believe that one out of every two Americans is just up and left their job, you know, said, take this job and shove it. But that isn't quite the case. Uh However, it is dramatic. Since last June, an average of four million Americans have been quitting their jobs every month. To put that in perspective, that's 23 percent higher than what was happening during 2020. So pretty significant. This is real. Real. And still happening now eight months later. Okay. Ten months later where we're at. Is it ticking up? No. It's pretty steady. At times in the last six months of 2021, it it spiked a little bit. The latest data in March still showed it's pretty steady around four million a month. So if you're in that spot where you're like, I don't know if this is where I'm to be. Obviously, you're not alone. You are not alone. alone. (laughs) Oh, man. You and about one quarter of the country. What's different, though, than the recession is that people are going going back to work. They have left jobs and gotten rehired. We've seen the biggest churn in industries that we could probably predict, like higher hourly wage type of jobs, service industry, especially think of anything that was deemed essential during the pandemic. And that's normal. But what isn't normal is that so many people kind of collectively at one time would start to reconsider so many aspects. So I got really curious about what's going on with that and wanted to dive deeper. And the research shows lots of reasons that we could all predict. Things were flattened in 2020. They came up more in 2021 when outlooks started looking a little bit better. But also then you have a lot of boomers who retired early. Mm -hmm. Housing market was really strong. People might have been saying, you know, I'm not sure I want to encounter all these health risks in my job, like if I worked in healthcare or education or what have you. Other times people were incentivized to retire early so that jobs could stay on for people who were more in like mid-career. We saw most of the quits coming from people in in mid-career, interestingly, which is millennials, and that's something to put a pin in, really interesting piece of data. Burnout is a huge factor, and I'm sure that a lot of people listening to this have experienced varying levels of burnout, Can't chronic the stress, the spiking of cortisol, the, the adrenal fatigue of just not knowing what is actually happening, and then compound that in a work environment. Mm-hmm. And burnout has other aspects, but it affects you physically, and you feel like your job is the source of your feelings of burnout. You can't figure out any other way to get away from that than to quit. Yeah. And then you just have the general people who are not engaged at work, who are looking for another job. And the most recent research that came out in March, a big study of corporate culture, and they it revealed that mm. toxic workplace culture is the number one reason why people quit their jobs. It's real. It's real. And now we have the science to prove it. Oh my gosh. So more than not making enough money, if your workplace feels toxic and then there are, you know, particular drivers of toxic workplace culture culture, those are the things that make people decide to quit, regardless of all the other factors. So could we dive into as employers that are listening out there and they're like, try my best. Can't you just put on a smile and be happy? That's a toxic comment right there. Yes. Toxic positivity. (laughs) (laughs) 
is not looking at the factors at play. You know, toxicity, it includes disrespect. It includes not inclusive environment. You know, there's other parts of that. Being in an environment where you're constantly feeling disrespected or leadership is not ethical, there's this sense of lack of trust and breakdown. Those are all factors that make you miserable when you're coming to work and they affect you physically. For the employers out there who are maybe feeling this because you've been losing people, and the question may be right now, like, what do I do to stop this? Yes. Because your human resources are an important investment. And we don't always look at what we lose when somebody, but there's actual money, you know, that you've invested in the training, the talent that this person has. And when that walks away, you have to reinvest and bring somebody in, not to mention the people who are left who are asking themselves like, well, should I be going as well? Mm -hmm. So if you want to retain those people and build a better culture, what do you do? Well, Gallup has done a ton of research on how are these things related. They identified five areas of well-being. So those five areas are career. So that's liking what you do every day. Community, which is where you happen to live physically. Social well-being, your connections with other humans. Physical well-being, your energy to, you know, do what you do, having good health, and then financial. So having the money to do what you need to do and managing it well. Of those five areas of well-being, the one that impacts all of them the most is career. And that also happens to be the easiest one to change. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Really fascinating. Career has the biggest impact on all of those aspects of well-being. And then it is the easiest one to change. So I love working with teams. I love working with managers to help them understand these are the strengths that I participate particularly have. And I'm also curious to how I can engage my team more. Employee engagement happens to be the single highest indicator of career well-being. Hmm. So now we're drilling down and we're seeing that engagement is a really important piece of this puzzle. Well, it just so happens that in the research that Gallup has done, one out of every two people are disengaged at work. If you were to ask your employees, do you know what is expected of you at work? Only one out of two people can say yes to that. Unacceptable. And shocking. Yes. That means you have people who are trying their best every day or trying or yeah. just don't know what their best should look like or how to deliver the deliverables or trying one thing and then hearing from their manager that wasn't what I wanted because it's a lack of communication. But when you have that high of a level of disengagement, then you have people who are also looking to get out the door. Conversely, when you have high engagement, you're totally impacting your bottom line in a really positive way. Well, people who know their strengths so that they can be engaged engaged at work, they're six times more engaged, they're showing up on time, they're taking less sick days, they're contributing positively to the bottom line because they are engaged. How do we get them engaged? We look to understand their natural talents and strengths and the Clifton Strengths Finder is a really amazing tool to help you mine that data, yes. pull it out, understand the natural resource, the human resource that you're working with. And when you get people using their talents and strengths, strategically developing them, learning how to be better in the things they're already naturally good at, that's how you increase employee engagement and then you increase productivity and incident. Incidentally, this may be my favorite factoid. People who are using their strengths regularly, they enjoy three times greater quality of life in all aspects of their life. So this flows into your family time, your recreational time, how you are in your community. I am passionate about this. I think you can tell because I do really think that there are solutions. The Great Resignation is really a referendum on work culture, and I, I am here for it. I think yeah. it's time, and it only shows us where the opportunities to grow and develop and be better yes. and change into work being something that doesn't diminish us or take away from our quality of life, but adds to it. I love that. So even if you are a corporation and you're getting a lot of information from the top and you've got all these goals and these deadlines and things like that, you still can create a very healthy environment, a communication mm -hmm. zone yes. for everybody. Yes. Just because corporate is telling you a yeah. certain thing, don't regurgitate, right? Right. And and also, no matter where you are on the management level, even if there's only one person on the team who happens to know their strengths, if you're just an individual, but you're like, oh, Emily, that sounds good. 
I want to not only know my strengths, but learn and develop and use them. You can still positively impact your team. Okay, good. So that's fun to know. If you are a manager, you actually are responsible for 70% of the productivity of your team. Did you hear that, managers? It's 70%. 70% of the culture, the team, the overall productivity goes back to the manager. So Mm. there's so much there. Am I communicating clearly? A, do my employees know what is expected of them? Am I meeting with them regularly? Am I creating an environment where people are free to speak up or innovate if you need to be innovative or creative at work Mm -hmm. you must be in an environment where you're free to fail and a manager can help create that kind of an environment and then when those things are in place you see the overall bottom line may come up people are more engaged. People are happier to come to work. They feel connected. When you know your staff, your talents, natural strengths, then you get strategic about how to put people in places where they can play to that more naturally. I love this. And you are offering up something right now. We can do a giveaway. So if this is something that is just piquing your interest and you want, is it an hour you said? Yes, I am offering one hour coaching session complete with the strengths assessment. So we would have that information and then we would spend an hour together in a coaching type of conversation, reviewing that and talking about some application for you in whatever you happen to be in. If you're a stay at home, if you are working, if you just like are curious, all of it is great. All of it is really rich information. So you can head over to our website, kffm.com or kw.com and enter to win right now. We're starting a whole new series. This is going to be a wellness Wednesday. So we talked about the employers this week and next time that you're on, can we talk about the employees? Yeah. The same thing. Individuals, the employees, everything. Well, everything. Yeah. Love that because everything comes down to work and money in the end, <laughs> right? Like if you can't it's a live, it's a big if part you of our lives. It is. <laughs> and obviously, if 70% of people are not being productive because of this one person is just not getting yeah. the clues, yeah. and maybe they want to, maybe they don't, but either way, this is the information that they need to hear. So, Emily, thank you. If people wanted to follow you on social media. Where could they find you? I am on Facebook at Emily Jameson Coaching. You can find me on Instagram at the Emily Jameson and my website is emilyjamesoncoaching.com. Oh, I love it. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to see us. Thank you, Sarah.